Let us be seated. Amen. We are talking about family, so that's why I have to sit down. So that um, you won't think I want to boss you. I'm not a boss in the house. I am just a mother. Uh, and that chair they gave me belongs to me. <laughs> that one is not for small girls like us. It's too much for me. I want to sincerely give glory to the Almighty God for this meeting that has been put together by the organizer here in LA. And we want to say thank you to our continental pastor. Pastor, Pastor Fadel, I'm sure, no doubt about it, that Ms. Lino is a very great teacher. Give God a clap of the again on his behalf. I have been asked to talk about save your marriage. I don't know why they asked me to talk about it. <laughs> but I'm so grateful to God that 
already the land is already cultivated. You only need to plant on it. Pastor Fadel has done a great job about whatever anybody may be thinking or the way we should go. Because at the end of the day, the Lord of the church is coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And not only as the Lord is the groom and we are the bride. And if that is already in process, it should be very easy for us to fall into the line of having a saved marriage. This is very important. And um, we are not going to overlook it. Marriage does have to be saved. By the grace of God, I will have to be successful. Need a base. There must be a foundation for it. And that is what the word of God is doing. That's part of what we have had. And the foundation must be very, very solid. It is not the one that you build in a day and tomorrow you will remove and pull down again and rebuild and rebuild. If the foundation is solid, then <laughs> we are safe. The Bible tells us in Psalm 11, verse um, 3. Sorry, I'm coming from Nigeria. I didn't prepare to have um, whatever is on the wall. Um, Psalm 11, verse 3, I am reading to you. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? For a marriage that is be saved, the foundation must be very, very strong. And it must be on the word of God. So if your marriage is going to be saved and be well, and people will look at you and say, oh, praise God, you have a good home then you have to remind, be reminded of some things. That's why we are in the house today. I know many of us are pastors, have been pastors for decades, but I'm telling you, some people, they only know how to teach, they know how to say it, but they don't do it. But the doer is most important than any other thing. The doer is the wise person concerning anything of the kingdom. So I believe in the house today, we have the doers in the house. Tell your neighbor, I am the doer of the word of God. So if our marriage is going to be saved, like I have said, we need the foundation to be solid. It must not be faulty. Because if the foundation is faulty, then the wall will break down. There is no way we can manage it. Therefore, in order to look into the process of how this marriage can be saved, I'm going to start from number one. Number one, the basic thing is that um, we must be union must be ordained of the Lord. The union must be ordained of the Lord. Genesis chapter 24 verse 40. It must be ordained of the Lord because when God is there, his thumbprint is already there. Then your certificate is genuine. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Aha. Uh -huh. Because many of us, the way we got married, only God can forgive us. But tonight, we can still... Yeah. That's why we say we are reminding ourselves. So, you can still adjust. Because some people just, you know, we just did it as we wanted to do it. 
you didn't have any clearance from God concerning it. In our own time, there are so many ways we have our own clearance. Thank God for good parents. And thank God for the SU of those days. Because you may be thinking those days are SU, SU, now we are not Pentecostals. But the scripture union people, those days, they did wonderful work. Some of us are their products. So you don't just, you know, be jumping from one place to another. We are controlled. And this is what it should be. Those of us who are still young and you have not got married, I pray tonight you will secure your basics and everything that you need for a glorious home. Because in, it's only in a glorious church you can find a glorious home. Because whatever happens in a glorious church, there must be a reflection of it in all our homes. You don't just put a stamp or you just, just bear a name without knowing your source. Thank God for Jesus Christ who has paid it all. So number one, the, um, the marriage must be ordained of the Lord. When Adam was, uh, when Eve was made for Adam, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 23, Genesis 2 23, immediately, Adam knew that this is born, there was the bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. Because God ordained it. Number two of it is that in, um, the book of Genesis 24, I mentioned this earlier, verse 40, 44 to 46, when Father Abraham wanted a, a wife for Isaac, he sent his servants, go into my household, because I still know that these people belong to God. Go and look for a wife for my son. Today, the, the, the boys and girls of today, they are two wives. They will ask, why should you look for a boy or a girl for my marriage? You don't need to look for a wife. But one of them was so wise, she came to me and said, is it possible for my father to look for, for a husband for me? I said, your father is godly. And God showed him in the spirit, this is your husband. Then you go and pray about this. But today we think, oh, that is not, that is uh, in <laughs> old school. Brethren, whatever is of God, it will be very clear and it will be sound. So, this marriage must have good foundation. It must be a union that is ordained by God. That is number one. Number two, the two of you must agree. We are trying to remind ourselves of the basic things to have a safe marriage. I, I wonder nowadays that you are still in courtship and you are fighting. I've heard of several people who are in courtship to the extent that, they, you know, the husband the husbands to be, you know, slap the wife. I was wondering, what kind of marriage will this be later? So, there must be agreement. After all, you are not seen in the bondage. You have not signed anything. If there is no agreement of Amos 3.3, 3, if two are going to work together, there must be agreement. This is very important. Since nobody is putting a rope on your neck and tying you to the neck of the man. So, there must be agreement. If there is misunderstanding during that time, and you can still be saved, you can still iron his house, it is still saved. But when there is no understanding, why you have not even signed the dotted um, line? 
why don't you quit it immediately? Unless you, you are not working in the spirit. If you are working in the spirit, we know that this cannot work. So, number three, because I, we are, I'm trying to save some time, Baba is still coming. There must be godly counseling. This is very important. Proverbs 11, 14. Proverbs 11, 14. To have a very safe marriage, there must be godly counseling. If you run away from counseling while you are still not yet married, then you are expecting problem and chaos. Because you don't know what to do. Some of these, of the young ones, they don't know they are right from the left. They don't leave the parents so much that uh, they can even learn from their parents. Some of us, our marriages have been sustained by what we have seen our parents doing while we were still under them. Today, I'm grateful to God, all glory to God, that I have not been reported to my father ever since I was married. And nobody has settled any quarrel between the general overseer and myself for 53 years of the marriage. Why? Because I never saw my parents fought once before I got married. So whose child will I say I am? They have even told me, don't come back to this house though. So in a safe marriage, the counseling must be right. Let us wait, listen to what God has for us. And those of us who have been married without the godly counsel, and we are now hearing, if there is any itch in your marriage, you can go back to your pastor or to somebody who is an elderly. This is what we are experiencing. Kindly help us. That's why I quoted Psalm 119, verse 130 in my prayer. The entrance to enter into your words give life. And it gives understanding to the simple. Anybody who wants his marriage to be successful must be humble to go for counseling. And even after you have been married and you find a niche in your home, Go for counseling if you still want that marriage to continue. Can I hear an amen? amen? This is very important. Godly Christian marriage must be, there must be counseling. Then, after counseling, what is the next thing? That is the importance of courtship. Courtship is important. You can't meet yourself today and get married next week. Where is the time for counseling anyway? So you must leave some period between when you meet yourself and the time you go to, to the court or go, go to the church for wedding. There must be courtship. Whereby you study each other, you know what this the, the, the next person wants at the time he wants it or what he doesn't want and what you two you don't like. So that right from the beginning you can settle all these things. But you don't take time to study each other then there will be problem. There must be courtship. And the courtship may be prolonged if God wants it prolonged for a purpose. And it may be short, but not too short, that it will not bring out a godly and safe married life. We must learn of each other. We must know who you are. I must know who. You must know who am I, and there must be something to tell you on what you are. The number four. There must be agreements on important principles. Important principles of marriage. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 2, verse 12, 
First Moses 3, 2, 12, and Ephesians 5, 33, 1 Corinthians 7, 3. All those ones are for the husband. Let me read one of his. First Timothy, I will read to you um, the verse 3. Because many of us will be saying, ah, but I'm not a pastor. I may not be a pastor, but I'm already ordained of the Lord. So there is no way you can escape. The moment the blood of Jesus cleanses you, and Christ paid the price over your life by his blood, you are part of his church. And you are a minister. So, First Timothy chapter um, 3, Verse 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy, or filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Brethren, <laughs> so many, so many. But if we have to take this one by one by one, we will sleep here overnight. Maybe when you get back home, you will go and read this again. Blameless, Pastor Fajet. Talk about a glorious church. If we are going to have a very safe marriage, the husband has a lot of work to do. It's very unfortunate nowadays that even in the gospel, some marriages don't last for two months. Very, 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 very unfortunate and sad you begin to wonder, who brought the two of you together to start with? Was it a forceful one? Where is love in it? Because if the art of the passages have already mentioned in Ephesians 5, 33, in, the, um, in 1 Timothy 3, 2, and 12, everything is there. Say, husband, love your wife. I don't know where you keep the word love. We have heard from the last message that Jesus loved the church. He gave himself to it. He died. He shed his blood. He, he, he paid all the price. Pray for sanctification for the church. Make sure that everything the church needs, he was, he, you know, he gave it to the church. So that is because he's expecting a bride. So, if you want a good wife, you yourself must be good. Ha -ha. <laughs> if you want a good wife, you must be good. You don't expect um, you don't expect magic to happen. You can't be a wicked man or wicked husband and expect a saint as your wife. Because everything you give me love, I give you love. You don't give me love, I touch you keenly and I know what to do. This is very, very important. Husbands, you must know your job. If we are in the Lord, all that the Bible tells us is, a, is the word to follow. If we want a safe marriage, because they said I should talk about safe marriage. Because anything after outside this, what is going to happen? There will be destruction. So, and it's only one wife, not two, not three, not four. Because the, the, the new trend now is that um, 
I'm tired of her. Uh -uh. You want to kill her? You are tired of her? And as a result, you have somebody in the office. You have somebody outside the home. You are not, you are not, you are not walking in the Lord, so to say, not in the spirit. You are already derailed as a, as a member of the church of Christ. And you are not planning to go to heaven. Because that is the ultimate something. So any man who is of the Lord, you have a lot of duty to perform. One wife. Vigilance. Sober. <laughs> you may be wondering, why should men be sober? If you are not sober, you are always looking for trouble. Then trouble will come. So you must be vigilant, you must be able to know because even two, three years, four, five years of marriage, you have not yet understood yourself. So you need to be sober, be watchful. What kind of woman have I married? I was listening so to somebody who was reporting the wife sometimes this week about what happened that when the wife is with him is something else but outside that one with other people ah you will see him as beautiful wife glorious wife oh beautiful wife but when he comes to the husband and as and, and the wife problem starts brethren you should be sober yourself, we men. You must be vigilant. If your wife can shout, you should know that the two, can, the two of you cannot be mad in the house together. That is where your soberness comes. Because you want a safe marriage, then you have to tolerate that shouting by correcting in love. Darlene, this is not how to say it. You can say it in a better way. Eh? Can I hear, can I see your smile? You, you know, do whatever you can do. So that that shouting that has been hurting your feelings, it can, God can work on it. Jesus prayed for you and me to sanctify us. Then you know that you have to, in your soberness, you have to pray. Pray out everything that you don't want in that woman so that that marriage can be saved. And not only that one, he said we should be of good behavior. Be a good boy all the, all the way. <laughs> I have to teach that since when we are together like this in the church, somebody is teaching, you should listen. Don't say, oh, I have a principle of my own. If your principle is against the will of God, will you still continue in, the, in that principle? Because at the end of the day, it will lead to hell. May our marriages never take us to hell fire in Jesus' name. So, not giving to wine. <laughs> Some people who are here, they know what they do in the secrets. They still keep some bottles of hot wine under their whatever in their shelf and uh, you will tell your wife well, don't let them know in the church you. Uh, the all knowing thing is there he knows all things if it is because of the church you are, you are, not, you are keeping your secrets the secret the one who knows all secrets is even there why, where you are keeping it not giving to wine a striker, not greedy. It's a very dangerous thing for a man to be greedy. Very, very. When you are greedy and you are, you, you, you are selfless, you are selfish, then it will not profit your home because the wife, as you are being vigilant, you are studying her, she is studying you. And one thing about human is that everybody wants to defend himself. The wife wants to defend herself. 
You too, you want to defend yourself. If the husband is greedy and everything is just for him alone, for him alone, ah, one day the wife will be sensible to say, look, in this home I have not come to be uh, to, to, to clean the gutter throughout my life. I too, I must build a house. But if you are open and you put out the, something on the, on, the, on the table for all of you to the card on the table for all of the two of you to play, even when the children are around, let them join you, then you will enjoy yourself. Even the ones you can't do it alone in two years, the two of you together, when you are not greedy, you do it less than six months in a year. Because if you are greedy, everything is for you, for you, for you alone. Then you are looking for trouble. So, the husband must not be greedy. Like, and I have an amen for that from men. <laughs> men are not saying amen. <laughs> You better say proper amen. amen. Uh-huh. The Bible says, no greedy or, fil- or filthy looker, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. <laughs> Everything is still talking about uh, materialism. I want to have this. And when you went to the shop, for God's sake, you got two suits for yourself. You didn't even think of buying a scarf for the wife. And you came back home without uh, the shopping. Oh, the wife said, welcome, darling, welcome. And then you are now praying. Don't put it in the wardrobe. Let's see what you have bought. <laughs> because you want to be smart enough. Just, oh, thank you, thank you. And then you will see, if you've just got two new suits, you didn't even think of buying either an handkerchief or a bag for her. Selfishness. It will be recorded. If the wife is not recording, she's recording it. And God is recording it. And wait. When the whole thing will be stored, and then your, 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 your what is this will be, will be overflowing. This is very important. But when you put the card on the table for every one of you to play, you make life so simple. Life becomes so simple. Nothing to hide. Then you are joyful. When you are laughing, you are laughing. This is very important. Greediness in the family. Men, you should take care of that one. Then, the Bible says we should rule your home well. Having these children in subjection with all gravity. Nowadays, most of the training for the children are done by the wife, which is very wrong. The two of you should do it together. Because I'm still coming back to that. I'm going to, when, when I leave this session, I will go to management. You should rule your house. We have heard about how God is ruling the church. There is order in heaven. The Bible didn't tell us that the wife is the one who will rule the house. It's an help me for you. So, and don't don't kill the wife with everything on her. She is the one who is going to pay the bill. She is the one who is going to do this. She is the one who is going to do that. We have had enough in the church. We have settled so many quarrels. I will leave that one to, to you to think about. Rule your home well according to the word of God. The ruler is the owner. <laughs> Unfortunately, in, in the, in the uh, whatever has been played down here, when there is a quarrel in the home and there is separation, the wife took the upper hand. Then the men are left with nothing. 
that you must learn from that. Why should you be left with nothing? Why should you allow for it at all? Why don't you from the beginning and from the word of God you are hearing, let it prosper you so much that there will be no quarrel in your home to the extent of separation. And then all you have been working for life, for life, we belong to one woman. And you will ask you to walk out of the house. How will you feel? Some people, they, they kill themselves, they commit suicide because of this. You don't need to commit suicide. If you commit suicide, you are going to hell. In order to prevent yourself from committing suicide, let us listen to the word of God. And let us save our homes and save our marriages. It doesn't cost much. You only need to release your spirit unto God and say, Father, thy will be done in this home. Thy will be done in this marriage. Once you do it like that, you enjoy everything. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Uh, women, you are not left behind. <laughs> You may be saying, thank God, Mommy Gio is talking to these men. What about you? The book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33 b What does it say to you, women? women? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33 b What does it say? It tells us about ourselves. There are something there you don't want to hear. In 33b, and the wife, see that she referenced her husband. Reference, respect, submit, so many other things like that for the wife. You don't want to hear it, and it's the word of God. You can't play yourself to be, you can't place yourself to be equal with your husband. The moment you do that one, you are already going against the will of God. You have to reference. You have to submit. You don't want to hear it, but it's the word of God. And if only you can do that one, it will take you higher in your homes. And the Bible in Colossians chapter 3, Colossians chapter 3, verse um, 18, let us see what he's saying to all of us, to women. Before you, you think, ah, nobody, we, we, we are hope of the something. You are a liar. <laughs> you have a lot to do in the, in the marriage that is safe. The Bible says, why submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord? Let me tell you, when it comes to submission, it's everything. Nothing to hide. Nothing to hide. Everything. You must do it in honor of the husband. That is if you want safe marriage and you want successful life for yourself. And that home. Because when you submit, as the Bible says, that women are helpmates for their wives, husbands. It will give you the, the strength to be a good helper. And helper must dance to the tune of the person is helping. If you are not dancing to the tune of the one you are helping, then you are just wasting your efforts. Your husband says, okay, oh, please, I'm going to work. When I come back, since you are still at home, this is what I want you to do for me today. I say, okay, I will. And after he has left, you say, as he has left it, so he will meet it. <laughs> uh, darling, ah, welcome, welcome. Ah, I still met this thing here. Why didn't you say, I don't, I don't even feel like walking today. You don't feel like. If the willingness and the willingness to be a good helper is there, you will pray for strength. Imagine a mission like RCCG. Glory be to God for everything. 
if I have to tell you the catalog of what God has given me to do and how God has helped me to do it, I will write books upon books. But because God has... To, why? There are other women you could have chosen now to be the wife of the general overseer. Then if he has chosen me, he has not made any mistake. I must submit my will to be an helpmate. So women, you should know which kind of helper you want to be. A destructive one or a successful one. If you, have not, you are not going to be a successful one, then the marriage cannot be safe. And the unfortunate thing is that out of the unsafety marriage, the children will have their own portion in it. The children will copy you. They will take you to their own home to when they are married. Because that's what they saw you all the days of their lives. Not helping your husband. Not showing good will for, for her, for him. Not wishing him well. And everything you are doing, the children will be studying and be keeping. By the time they know, you know it, you know it. That's what they will replicate in their homes. And you build a generation of unruly children. Children who don't fear God. Children who will not respect the word of God. This is a very dangerous thing. Women, we must be careful. We must not be proud. I don't want to use the word too proud. Why are you proud? Nobody forced you to marry this man. You said you will marry him. And you know the will of God, the word of God. Why can't you just follow and live a very beautiful, peaceful life? Why do you want trouble in your home? Why do you want fighting, fighting, fighting all the time? Maybe because I don't know how to fight. That's why I'm talking about this. I've never, I've never, you know, remember any time I fought anybody. Either physical combat or this and that or any abusive language. In our home, we don't use the word uh, stupid boy. Stupid. We, we have never done it before. Because even where I was brought up, my father never did. Or my mother. Brethren, we have to come back to the landmark. Mama Mary submitted to Joseph. And she had Jesus, the Savior of the whole church today. Why can't we put ourselves in that position of Mama Mary? Who said at the end of the day, whatever you say, I will do. The Lord will help all the women in the mighty name of Jesus. We are talking about roles. You know, agreeing to important principles. Number two, out of it, apart, of, apart from playing our own role, is praying together. In many homes, there are no, there is no altar. <laughs> they just, the day the husband will agree to pray, that will be the day probably Jesus will be coming very soon. The day some wife will say, okay, darling, I now hear, okay, if you know, say, is it your prayer you don't can be, will be answered? Some women are like that. I've said to so many callers, oh, let us pray. When we first say, uh -uh. Does this mean if I don't pray with you, 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 God will not answer my prayer? Go and do your own prayers. Uh, the Bible says two are better than one. One will change a thousand, two will change ten thousand. And prayer is the strength for safety in, in, the, in the marriage. It's a great strength. I know what I'm talking about. When we became born again and finally the general overseer was, was given the position of general overseer. And every elder in the church, their eyes were like this on us. We had run away before. Before they gave, gave him that post, we ran away from Lagos to Elon to save our lives. And finally, the only thing came. And I have seen this thing four times. God has shown me. 
I said, no way. Uh uh-uh. uh. No way. But finally, it happened. He came back. When he began to pray and the amen is so quiet, I will be the one whose amen will be the loudest. Amen! In those days, some of us were so rascal. We want to show you to them that we are God. Brethren, prayer is essential. You don't pray, you are, you are saying you can do it alone. And your strength cannot carry you anywhere. But when you pray, you are receiving strength, grace from the Almighty God. And it will be better than when you say, oh, I don't want to pray. I don't have time for prayer. Then you live a life of danger. May God keep danger away from our homes. This is very important. Then, forgiving one another. That's another thing. Pastor mentioned it sometimes. Even that in the church, you keep malice, you keep this, you do that. What are you going to do without this problem? It means you don't have enough to do. If you have enough things occupying your mind, oh, I must write a book on uh, holiness. I must write a book on how to keep home. I must write a book on how to live a, 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 a wealthy life in the Lord. If something is occupying your mind and you have a lot of things to do, you will not be keeping malice. Unforgiveness is so much among couples. Ah, you are started again. You, you, don't, you, you, you. What you did last year, September, you have started again. No? Why? And you are of the Lord. Whatever that is pure, Philippians 4 it was mentioned to us when Pastor Fadel was talking. He said, we should add virtue to what we have. It's not that we should be adding chorus and, and putting all kinds of evil on our hearts that we cause hypertension. The rate at which people are having hypertension today is so much and it leads to stroke. Young men, young women. What do you want? What is life? It's a vapor. I did out of the 70 years, thank God for some people already after 70 years who are elder in the house. So, <laughs> so, some of us are still very young. The Bible says out of 70 years, you are keeping this malice quarreling. Uh, you have come again, oh. No? Ah. What kind of troubled life do you want to live? Somebody who has peace in her heart has not finished doing whatever God has not fulfilled his destiny or her destiny. But you, every day you have a catalog of all the things you keep in your diary. I was telling Pastor Father, we were just talking, I said, that's one thing I am very bad at. I don't know, know how to keep record. It may be a negative one or even positive. But you will say, ah, thank you, mommy, for yesterday. I begin to wonder, what is yesterday? What happened yesterday? Oh, <sighs> Brethren, let's live a simple life for God's sake. Live a simple life. Joyful life. So that even while you are old, you are still 80, 90, you are enjoying your marriage. Because everything is simple. You don't hide anything from each other. You don't keep malice. There is forgiveness because I'm talking about unforgiveness. If you don't forgive, your prayers will not be answered. And you will come to church, you will be the one who will shout the loudest, hallelujah, you will keep vigil, you will do this, you will do that. But yet, you don't forgive others. This evening, that of forgiveness will be uprooted from your heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to talk, still talking about 
how to handle the basic things. Management is the third one. Is it the third or the fourth? Management of income. Because that one I've seen of is over the years that it causes a lot of trouble. Some couples keep common pause. Good. But my teaching in it is that whatever you call common pause must be agreed upon. Maybe a percentage of your salary and our own percentage. And what do you want to be doing the common with the common pause? Maybe for the children's education or for paying some bills in the house, there must be an agreement. There should be no report from the wife that, eh, we are keeping common post. And uh, last year, every morning, she sent it home to, uh, to his uh, brother. Uh, the, the, the year before, he sent it home to, to his mother. The... What do you think the wife will do? If we get out of the common, whatever is common denomination or common. <laughs> so, if you don't want to keep common pause, it's not a sin. But if you are keeping it, you must be honest and be faithful to each other. When you are not faithful, you, you are just opening your life to evil. Because every unfaithfulness is recorded. It's expected of the, of the steward to be faithful. Any unfaithful steward will give account. So if you are not keeping common posts, I'm talking about management now. Management of resources is not a sin if you don't keep. Then if you keep, you must be sincere. Can I hear an amen about that one? There must be no cheating. No line. <laughs> this is very important. Also, in management of this um, income as essential as it is, we must not keep anything from each other. Okay, I have done this. If you overspend sometimes, Say, I am sorry for it. It's not that we allow the wife to be accusing you, accusing you all the time, or the man accusing you, oh, you have blown it up, you went to uh, Nostrum today, uh, you got everything, you blown it up, you better be careful. Cut your coat according to your cloth. Don't do more than you, 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 you are earning. Is very important. And that is why the Bible says in it's possible to six is godliness with contentment. It's a great gain, brethren. All these things we are hearing in the church. Our our uh, workshop is our home. It is in the home you have to apply everything you are hearing from the church so that you can have a very safe marriage. May the Lord keep our home safe in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number four, progress management in your home. We should not allow stagnancy. No marriage is supposed to be stagnant. No couple is supposed to be stagnant. I married you as a tailor in, with one, one, one machine. And after 10 years, you see how and one machine is already dilapidating. And you could no longer do so some work again. You didn't add any virtue to it. Or oh, I married you as a caterer. You have not taken your catering job to another level. And you are still cooking with one gas cooker. And you don't have people to patronize you. You don't go out. You don't do this thing to... You know, every home that is going to have a successful marriage and um, safety, there must be progress. Can I hear amen? amen. <laughs> the Bible, God created us to be progressive. In Genesis chapter 1, 26, most especially 28, he said, go and be fruitful 
and multiply. Have dominion. Have dominion. Everyone in life must be fruitful and be multiplied. There must be progress in our homes so that there will be safety. Can I hear an amen again? Desire to help each other to be progressive. Desire to help each other to be progressive. Don't ruin the life of your husband. That is where understanding comes in. Okay, the husband said, I am going for further studies. Great. You, you stand by him. If possible, you even pay some of the fees. And because when, after he has finished, and you call, it's your own turn to go, he will stand in the gap for you financially. And at the end of the day, the two of you, you are making progress. And nobody will be able to say, eh, I did it for you. You did it for me. And what is the essence now? What is the result? We are both called together to help each other. Can I hear an amen for that? By the grace of God, your marriage will not suffer stagnancy. There yeah, will progress in the mighty name of Jesus. And uh, some men are used to this language that is used in some of our uh, you know, ethnic groups in Nigeria, or I don't know whether it happens here. You say somebody is sitting on their destiny. <laughs> when the wife is doing well and the husband is not doing well, the husband will be accusing the wife that the wife is sitting on her destiny. I have a, 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 I have a friend who is a counselor. Anytime I send somebody to, to, to her to counsel, she will come back to give me the results. That she accused them. Why did you put your destiny down and they are sitting on it? <laughs> Brethren, this is very important. Don't be against each other's progress. If the wife has progress, it's to the glory of the husband. If the husband has progress, it is to the glory of the wife. This is very essential, most especially in a Christian home. And this one will save our marriage. Number six, career choice. Or choice of career. Before you get married, probably you have agreed, I'm going to be a medical doctor if you are not yet one before you got married. And then you, I'm going to be wife, I'm going to be a teacher. But along the way, the career change. You must sit down to think about this. Pray about this. That's why we say prayer is one of the key for a good um, foundation for the, for the marriage. Because the problem we have nowadays is that career has destabilized so many good homes. The husband may be an accountant, who is walking outside the, outside the town, staying over there three weeks in a month, and come back the last week of the month, maybe spend about five days. So in a whole year, five times 12, 60 days, 60 days father, 60 days husband, 60 days, um, um, what do we call it? Whatever. 60 days parent food. 60 days. There must be choice of career to sustain marriage. Don't choose any makeup to take to any profession that will ruin your home. Some of us in our own time, we don't have any choice much. It's either you go for medicine or you go for to be a teacher. I chose to go for teaching so that I can take care of my children and my home because I love home. This is very, very important. 
There is no glory in you being publicized all over the world and the papers and saying, oh, she's this, she's that, or she's that. And in your home, you are nobody. Nobody to your children, nobody to your wife, nobody to your husband. There is no glory in that. And God is preparing us for a glorious church. So if your career is destabilizing your home, in this meeting, pray through. There is nothing God cannot do. When there is a will, there will be a way. May the Lord help you. There will be no separation in your home. Um, finally, because I've talked about parenting along the way, if there is a sign of home breaking, what do we do? If there is a sign of home breaking, you are beginning to notice some trends. When my husband goes to work, he used to come back later by 7 p.m. Now, <laughs> if we have an excuse, he will be coming back at 9 p.m. What happens today? Ah, a lot of goes through. So, when there is a sign of home breaking at every stage of the marriage, there must be efforts to settle the quarrel instantly. Don't allow it to go deeper and deeper. Before the husband gets to, you know, that he will not be able to come back again. He will stray away like lost sheep. But when you notice and it's a prayer fully, Bring him back. And if you notice anything concerning your wife that she has not been doing before, she's now doing it. She has been preparing a very good meal before. Nowadays, she just put anything on the table. Uh -uh. <laughs> Jokingly, you first start joking, my dear. Uh, this soup is now, it's not as tasty as it used to be. What's the matter? If you need to add money, you better add the money. <laughs> this is very important. Because you want to work out all everything with fear and trembling to save our home. Because home is where you come to when there is trouble in the city. And when you come back to home and your home is not sweet, the Yoruba has an idea that when the home is not sweet, this city will be, it will be something else. Brethren, I pray today, anything that is already disturbing your home, God himself will deal with them. Amen. Do not give room to the devil. Do not allow the spirit of fornication flee it like Joseph did. And then finally make heaven your goal. The two of you, the husband, the wife, the children. Let's make heaven our goal. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? I pray that we will not lose our souls in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, we may be pastors. Because this is supposed to be pastor's conference. Or you are not yet one. Whoever you are, either a teacher or a counselor, we need to apply whatever we are teaching to our homes. You are, if we don't apply it, it means we are not wise. We are building other people's homes and our homes are dilapidating. What is good in it? This is the time for us to come back to the drawing board. So that's we can have a glorious home and have a glorious end. This is very important. Shall we bow our heads? This is the time to repent of all we have been doing in our homes that are not right, that are not according to God's will. God can help us. He can help us. Let's repent and tell him all the areas where we know that we have been allowing for trouble 
and we have been allowing for separation or allowing for malice and all kinds of evil. Let's repent and ask God to please help us because we said prayer is the key factor in having a safe marriage. What's about our income? Let us pray that God himself we provide for all our needs so that our marriages can be saved from the evil of lack. So that our marriages can be saved and we can have enough even to give to other people. Let us pray that there will progress in our homes. That every form of stagnancy, God will deal with them. Tell God that the major facts about love, the love of God, will be in our midst. We love ourselves, love our children, love the Lord, and love God's people. Let's pray about that one. And that we'll be good parents to our children. So that we will not create generations of evil people. But loving people who also will enjoy their marriages and will go to heaven instead of allowing their marriages to take them to hell. And finally, we are going to pray that every evil thing that the devil has planted in our homes or in our hearts that can destroy our homes that God himself will help us to escape them and if they are already there that God will uproot fornication, unfaithfulness lying keeping of malice unforgiveness all these things we not allow our marriages to be safe. Let's ask God to please come and help us. And give us a willing heart to repent of all these evil things that we have done in the past. So that we can have an enjoyable home and a fruitful marriage. And a safe marriage. And at the end of it, make heaven. Let us begin to bring our prayer to a close. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are so grateful to you for giving us this opportunity again to remind us from your word how we can live our lives as husband and wife and even with our children safe in your arms. We are grateful for the word of life that has built us, that has corrected us where we had gone wrong. The word of life that has shown us lies. And we are saying, Father, today, because you say that it gives understanding to the simple. Every pride in our hearts that has not allowed us to bow down for the word so that we can have a safe marriage. Uproot them in the name of Jesus. Replace it with humble spirit. Sober spirit. So much that you will be the Lord in our homes. And our homes shall be enjoyable. It will be heaven on earth. We don't want to miss heaven because of marriage. It doesn't want it. Father Lord, whatever we not allow us to make heaven in our homes. Today, we ask that we come and help us and remove it. For the young ones that are not yet married, we pray for them sincerely to the parents that we please guide them, help them, choose the right partners for them, and don't let their marriage become hell for them. Let it be enjoyable and let it be heaven on earth. And in heaven we pray, none of us shall miss it. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.